Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome to Evolution of Pro Wrestling. I'm your host, Lewis, the Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling. And I'm Jay, the Wiz Kid of Pro Wrestling. Hey, that was a great introduction. Welcome back, fans. We are here, uh, actually, back-to-back week uh, episodes. Uh, and the reason why is because next week is Thanksgiving. So we weren't going to do a show on Thanksgiving. You know, that's uh, an excellent time for family to be together, give thanks. So we decided to come back a second time in a row. And then after that, we're going to be taking three weeks off and coming back the first week of December. But today, we have an amazing topic for you. But before we get into that topic, wrestling news. A lot has been happening in wrestling, Jaden, especially with AEW. Like, AEW just saw Hangman... Page, Adam Page, become the new AEW heavyweight champion by beating Kenny Omega. Like, this was, was a shocker. match in the making between these two. Like, that was definitely a match. It was just, making. it was amazing. It was amazing. It was, it was something to see. Right. It was a good match. And then to top it off, the Young Bucks didn't interfere. They gave him the nod, they let him go, and he won the match. But now, um, there is word that Kenny Omega is going to be going undergoing some uh, a series of surgeries. Oh, of what we have read, dude. I think that's probably another reason why he uh, he did lose he the title lose because of that. And it's it's a shame that he has to go uh, go through all that. But hey, he can get, he can rest up, get his surgery, and then come back, and then have another rivalry with Hangman. Then we saw a heel turn. By Brian Danielson. I couldn't believe that one. That caught me off guard. I was not expecting that heel turn. But that, I feel like that was done for the best, though. I feel like that was a good heel turn for Brian Danielson. That was a really good heel turn for him. And, you know, from <clears throat> previous times we've seen him be a heel, he did one great job. So, well, it's, it's like I said, when, you, when it comes to AEW, they're, they're, they're pushing the envelope now. You know, they're pushing the envelope. They're knowing what they're doing now. They're getting some good superstars. And Brian Danielson is just one of them. And he was a great acquisition, an acquirement that AEW needed and did. Right. You know what I mean? And the, in that, full gear was amazing. AEW pay-per-view full gear was off the charts. Absolutely. Like, that was a good one. And so, Vince McMahon has to, has to see... <laughs> We got some competition here. So well, he should see that he has competition. Well, he's never going to see it because Vince McMahon is blind when it comes to stuff like that. So, yeah, it's like, ugh. Um, in other news, Hulk Hogan, um, this word that WWE Hall of Fame Hulk Hogan has been dealing with some health issues, mm. according to Ric Flair. Um, it's not specific what type of health issues this man is going through. Uh Hulk Hogan is in his 60s. He's been through a whole bunch of certain things that's happened in professional wrestling. He's had a lot of bumps and bruises, knee replacements, back surgeries. Like, oh, man. Right. But he was st he's still around. He's still around. Right. Um, but how for how long? We don't know. Can the man barely walk? <laughs> Right. It's unfortunate. You know, that's what that's what happens in the ring. You take too many bumps and I mean, hey, you know, he paid how, for it. You know. Jeff Hardy's going to be when he gets over. Well, Jeff him. Jeff Hardy, well, you never know. Jeff Hardy probably keeps himself in shape. Hulk Hogan does too. He does his workout and I does mean, his stuff, you I know, mean, but, but look at all the bumps Jeff Hardy's taken. How look how many tables and ladders and all that stuff he's been through, so. No, it, it, like you like you said, you know, it could be different, but I don't think anybody could be able to walk straight after all that no after all those bumps it's 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 just impossible like when look at mick foley mick foley is <laughs> is uh it's over his 50s i think or something like that and he pretty much he could barely walk us up what happened to him right the man went through it all he mick has foley, problems yeah mick foley's been through see everything. look at it he, he, christopher brown just said lewis over the past 10 years hogan's gone under the knife 25 times 25 times that's a lot that's that is a lot. That that takes a toll that on your body. A lot. You know, it takes a toll on your body. That takes a big toll on your body. That and, hurts. Yeah, of course. And hey, Lewis, what's going on, brother? Welcome, welcome. Owner and CEO of EGCW Extreme Global Championship Wrestling. Um, we also heard that WWE 
has closed their offices in Mexico City. They losing some money. Rancho, what's going on, brother? I'm not I'm not sure what's going on with the WWE, but it's it's a it's lot. not looking good. It's not looking good. You know, good. they they're selling a lot of things. They're they're doing a lot of things that they that people are, are wondering what's going on. What's going on with with the franchise? Honestly, the I WWE think... was one of the top organizations in the world. That like was the, probably... that was the top. That was probably now, one of the lowest. Honestly. No, it's it's definitely still up it's there. It's still up there, but it's nothing compared to like something like AEW. No, it's was... definitely no, it's still definitely compared to AEW. No matter what, Ow. WWE is still an empire. They yes, they on their last leg. They're on their last leg. I unless they, they do agree. listen, unless they come up with some new tactics, it's going to be tough to rebound from that. Um, Honestly, we also heard think, uh, on another news. I'm sorry, Jay. What's up, Alvin? How you doing, man? Long time no see. I honestly think that Vince McMahon is just trolling. Like, no, honestly, he just doesn't care anymore. He's just doing it for his own fun. Well, we got this news. Um, according to WrestleNews.com, Roman Reigns has said he would not mind facing The Rock. And he says he, he he don't know if The Rock wants to fight him, but he's ready to. That's true. <laughs> so Christopher says, and Jaden, if you're looking for another former WWE star, most likely headed for a wheelchair 10 to 15 years from now. It's <laughs> Definitely. Jeez. Well, it, it, listen, it, wrestling takes a toll on you. I mean, I'm surprised. It takes a toll on you. But, you the know. The bumps and bruises take a toll on you. Could be wrong, though, because look at Sabu. Sabu. No, Sa no, well, but Sabu has retired from professional He's wrestling. He's retired, but, like, when he, before he retired, he was still able to walk like, like, nothing ever happened, so. Well. That's honestly, that's a, that's good if you could keep yourself healthy like that. Of that's course. Really good. And uh, in other news, guys, uh, for those of you who play video games, so for WWE video games, um, there's some there's some new features confirmed for WWE 2K22, including re the return of general manager mode. Maybe we should get that. You could be the general manager in your video game. You know what? We should, what? Get, we should get that so it could beat you down, Dad. Oh Lord, here this boy go. <laughs> for people who don't know, I'm a very competitive. He's gamer. very competitive when it comes to video games, gamer. and he. I don't lose because I am. At yeah, he said the goat. I'm the goat at video games. Sabu is special and lucky case. Oh uh, well, Sa Sa listen, Sabu. I mean, is, hey, Sabu when he got down in the ring. Listen, he got they, down. there was there, there's a reason they called that man the homicidal suicidal maniac of professional wrestling. But he made a name for himself. He like made I, a name for himself. I feel like I got sneeze. <laughs> so sneeze. I can't sneeze. <laughs> Jay Lethal is all elite. Yes, we were Lethal. about to announce that. Jay, Jay Lethal, Lethal is, all is all elite. He is an AEW. This is interesting because he is amazing when it comes to professional wrestling and especially AEW with his character. It is, it is, I'm anxious to see what he's going to do when he starts doing, getting into a new rivalry in AEW. I absolutely agree. You know, and listen, there was. That mat, that full gear, that match besides that Hangman Page and Kenny Omega, though another match that was awesome was Ken was CM Punk and uh, Eddie uh, Kingston. CM Punk actually proved himself in that match. I actually liked that match from CM Punk. Honestly speaking, you yeah, know, I haven't really been paying attention to a few CM Punk matches, but this one, that uh, this one actually caught my attention. Yeah, no, this one listen, I actually like. They watch. take the bumps and bruises. They they do what they need to do. They sell for the fans. They sell for their superstars. But, but when you talk about selling, <laughs> there's one man that if you weren't going to go over, you weren't going to go over. Which brings us to this week's topic. This man raised havoc all over professional wrestling in the late 70s into the beginning of the 80s. This man, unfortunately, is going to come out, lost his life due to tragedy. But when he came down that ring, there was no stopping him. I'm talking about Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody. One thing I miss from WWE games in general is being able to upload your own themes for your creative character. <laughs> oh, man. For real, though. I remember that. I for remember real. that. I remember I that, that when I hope that is a when you would do no. I, I remember that when they used to do that. That's what I'm saying. That that, that they, it may have to come to a scene that they have to come back old school. 
You know what I mean? Sometimes that's the best thing to do. You know what I mean? You see a lot of these movies now out there that the people are coming back with sequels because that's what it was. Old school is coming back. People don't see it, but it's coming back. It's I'm just telling more, you. just more CGI and things like that now. More updated things. Exactly. It's more updated things. All this internet crap and stuff like that. But, it, it, hey, it works. If it works, it works. It works. You know what I mean? But let's go back to what we were, the man we were just talking about. Bruiser the man of the Brody. hour. Bruiser Brody was, without, without a shadow of a doubt, a renegade. He was a master. He was a master. He was... The man did what he had to do. Listen, like I said when we first talked about Bruiser Brody, this man had people move away when he was walking down the aisle. That's a masterpiece right exactly. there. Exactly. That is a straight master. If you got and, a uh, guy walking. I, I would like to announce we have our uh, producer and director, my lovely wife, Yesenia, and uh, your stepmom. Thank you, honey. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. When, um, Like I said, when you got a guy walking down the aisle and you see people moving He's swinging back, a chain. You're swinging a chain coming down. He had wrestled all over the world. He wrestled in Japan. He wrestled in WCCW, World Class Championship Wrestling. He wrestled in Puerto Rico. He was a legend. But Japan was where he was famous. He fought the Giant Baba. He fought Kamala, Abdullah the Butcher, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. He tag team with Stan Hansen. And I still remember the infamous no sell with Lex Luger. Him and Lex Luger were fighting in a steel cage match. Now, like, like I said, if he did not want to sell for you, he didn't. He wasn't gonna sell he for you. He never sold. If he really did not want to sell, and that is, that's just that proves how he does business. You know, that's not always a bad thing. But like, hey, that man, that man was a legend. He of didn't he was a sell legend. for nothing. No. Like when I'm talking, he didn't Absolutely sell. Not. If you had to throw him down, he would stand there. And not let you throw him, and he would probably clothesline you or something. He but, did not listen, sell for the life of Bruiser him. Brody had a vision. Bruiser Brody pretty much knew what to do when he was inside the ring. All the time. He knew who to sell for. He knew what to do, who to do it with. And there will be times that he will pretty much he would turn into the character when he was when he would come to certain places. Like his wife said, he turned Bruiser Brody like that. Well, if you guys haven't seen the documentary, his wife said, you know, he was he was just an average guy before he got before he left his wife. Once he left, once he was getting on that plane, he took his hair out and he became Bruiser he Brody. He became Bruiser Brody you've on seen, the other side. You've seen the character, form. the transformation. You've seen, you've the, seen transformation. the transformation. You've seen the transformation. You've seen and that's what happen. that's what lacks today with professional wrestling. You know, professional wrestling, you used to be able to have your gimmick. Some people still act, uh, they still go like that. They still do their gimmick outside of wrestling. There's some wrestlers that still do that, but it's kind of rare to see that now because a lot of wrestlers, like, you know, they. No, but that's what I'm saying. Their that gimmick they, don't, they don't believe in their gimmick anymore. You know, like they, back then when Bruiser Brody ever was thinking, he fought guys, like I mentioned, Jimmy Snooker. Jimmy Snooker was crazy back then. He was. Ma imagine putting him and him and Bruiser Brody in the same ring. Against each other. That's hectic. That's right hectic. That's a that's a hectic match. That's a crazy. You match. know, that's a crazy match that's gonna happen, and all hell is gonna break loose. You know what I mean? So, what do you do? How are you? What do you do if you're a referee in a match with Jimmy Superfly Snooker and Bruiser Brody? And Jimmy Superfly Snooker and Bruiser Brody were a team. So, and Stan Hansen, Stan, Stan Hansen, Hansen and Bruiser Brody was also a team. So imagine those two went at it like. They beat the living but Jesus out of people. <laughs> right. <laughs> like it was it was taking candy from a baby. You should take people should take that as an art though to work with Bruiser Brody because many people don't get didn't get that opportunity. Okay. So okay what's going on, Jeff? What's going on, brother? Welcome, to, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh <laughs> Okay, Jaden, let me ask you a question. What's up? We talking about the history of Bruiser Brody and his greatest rivalries. In your opinion, what was the bloodiest match you've ever seen with Bruiser Brody? And against who? Abdullah the Butcher. Oh, I knew you were going to say Abdullah that. Abdullah the I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Abdullah the Butcher had a fork. Abdullah the Butcher has marks on his head from that fork getting put into his head. Now, I'm not talking like no little stab marks. I'm talking this guy legit still has stab marks in his head from getting stabbed with his own fork. Do you know how painful that is? 
You you can see it too. If you see Abdullah the Butcher now, you would see he literally has stab wounds in his head. Listen, he fought he fought guys. Fork wounds, my bad. He fought guys like Ricky Steamboat. He fought Terry Funk. He fought Young Blood. He fought Dory Funk, the Funk Brothers. Um, Who else? Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy. Him, Bruce Brody, and Kerry Von Erich fought against Michael Hayes and Terry Terry Bam Bam Gordy at the time. Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Michael Hayes a part were a part of the Freebirds. Mm-hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt, at that time in World Class Championship Wrestling, was the f- the best faction it was. Right. They had a rivalry with uh, um, the Von Erichs. Holy shit! Like that <laughs> match. No, that rivalry was amazing. It was amazing. It was an amazing rivalry. <laughs> right. You know, and I still I still think about it to this day. It's such an amazing rivalry. You know, the way curse. the way things go, it's like, oh man. It's different now. You don't see rivalries like that often. You don't see thing. You don't see things happen like that anymore because it's people don't take wrestling. They don't take wrestling anymore. seriously. People but, don't take uh, it seriously. Before we continue, Jaden, please, uh, for wrestling fans, please feel free to share your content all over social media. Bring uh, your friends, your cousins, everybody in this topic Everyone. with wrestling news and our topic for today, Bruiser Brody's greatest rivalries in the history of Bruiser Brody as we go. Absolutely. And uh, as we, again, as we further go along, we will continue to um, give you wrestling news. And uh, speaking of wrestling news, this is also was in the video game. Uh, WWE confirmed that the 2K Showcase mode will have fans relive a legendary WWE superstar's most iconic matches, moments, while my faction will put players in control of building a legendary faction that rivalries the iconic NWO. Players will collect, manage, and upgrade superstars with weekly events and regular updates. I want to get that game. There are so many things going on with, get with this video game. game. You know, they got so many, uh, so many added added um, stuff. Like, okay, I want that game. That, that's that game sounds like it's so. It sounds be. like 2K22, WW2K22 is gonna be an Might impressive be a game. But I don't know. I gotta see it for myself. I might need to buy it. You right. know what I mean? And I see uh, what's see going on. Freddie King, welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome. But see what's um, going on. but back uh, to our topic with Bruiser Brody, as we mentioned. You mentioned Jaden. The bloodiest match was with Abdullah the Butcher. Yes. When Abdullah the Butcher and Bruiser Brody always fought. It was a bloodbath. You can never expect them not to, not have, a bloody to match. have a bloody match. You, you, they were you, going to go if all If you out. thought that they would leave the ring without a single drop of blood, you got something else coming. Listen, because with that, <laughs> Abdullah the, the Butcher had a fork alone. So imagine, he had a fork. They they, they went at it. They I remember I saw a match when Bruiser Brody put a, um, put a cable around his throat. He did. And he was bleeding. He they was fought in the bleeding. steel cage. They fought everywhere, they and fought it was just crazy the way that matches. rivalry was between those, those two. Those matches were yowzer. Oh, my God. Those guys had a bloodbath left and right, left and right. Yeah, so no. I, feel, I feel like Bruiser Brody's best rivalry is Abdul. No, br- of course. 100%. No, but then you got other rivalries. You, of course you He do. fought Carlos Colon in Puerto Rico. He did. That they had a, a, a massive barbed wire match. He's fought guys like uh, Tatsumi Fujinami yes, in Japan. Was he a was good, a legend was a in one. Japan. He was a legend. No, a good one that also was him and Antonio Noki. That was good too. He, the man has had great matches. Brian, You're... what's up, brother? Welcome. Um, he's had great matches. Right. You know, and that's what Bruiser Brody did. He but he did it with force. Like of if course. he if oh, yeah, he was gonna make you know who, who the he hell was. he was. Right. He was gonna make because his that's name what, known. That's what Bruiser Brody does. He made himself. He, made he was himself in business for him. Brody's for Brody because he was he, pretty much that was the uh, the renegade Roddy Piper, the the older version of Roddy Piper because Roddy Piper wasn't he didn't trust anybody he wasn't gonna put anybody over that he didn't need to I mean that's and that's kinda, what Bruce he went into business for himself to protect himself and the business I mean business. but honestly though I feel like that is the way to go in you can't always expect you to put yourself over other people especially you know if you still gotta make a living for yourself too of so. course. Absolutely. I feel like uh, both, Absolutely. both both Roddy Piper and Bruiser Brody were being smart in that. Well, see, Rob, see, I, I would have loved to see Roddy Piper take on Brody because Roddy cool. Piper was a maniac that when it came was. in his time. Like he, he just didn't care. Uh, that would be interesting to see. That you know, would he, be really interesting. No, it was definitely interesting to see that, and that would be very interesting. It's like I wish we could have <laughs> seen that. Well, it's. It's only a dream, Jay. Only a dream. You know what I mean? But you um, can't even put that in a video game now. 
Yeah, I know, I know. It's like, ugh. Yeah, um, sucks. Wrestling fans, also, we uh, we got some news here also that we forgot to mention. Hmm. Um, apparently, Becky Lynch uh, does not own the trademark, the man, anymore because she sold it to the WWE. That, according to reports, Ric Flair is disappointed by Becky Lynch's comments saying WWE and Lynch do not own the man's trademark anymore because she sold it. I don't know why. You know what I mean? It made no sense. And then, speaking of Becky Lynch, she, according to the news, she says that she watches AEW. Is she interested could in going we have, to AEW? We, I'm telling you, if she goes to AEW... Could we so have Seth, Seth Rollins if she goes, AEW? No, if she goes to AEW, I'm telling you, Seth Rollins is going to go right along with her. I'm well, telling, listen, I'm you. that'll be a big blow. I'm telling you, if, if they do that... If she decides to go to AEW, most likely Seth Rollins is going to go to AEW. That'll be a big and blow to the that, WWE. That definitely. That big would time. be a big blow to WWE. I don't know, man. I don't know, but all I'm saying is that when it comes when it comes to to Becky Lynch, she's kind of up in the air right now. So, I don't know. But Anyway, back to our topic with Bruiser Brody. So, Jaden, when you mentioned he he the the superstars we mentioned, Tatsumi Fujinami, Antonio Noki, Dick Murdoch, one in particular, like you mentioned, he fought the Invader. Hmm. Now, him and the Invader had really personal beef in Puerto Rico. They legitimately they hated they, each other. They did have beef. That's they hated right. each other. They had legitimate and it led beef. to uncertain uncertain circumstances. But hey, Russell, what's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. Um, but Bruiser Brody was a phenom at the time. Of course. Now, like I said, you saw what happened with Lex Luger. He was not selling for Lex Luger at Lex all. Lex Luger legitimately got mad because he did that, right? Or yeah. Like he he, legit- but he left the cage. He left. It. He left the cage, and it it was just it was terrible. It the was- match was beyond crazy because Brody did not <laughs> want to sell. sell. And. Backstage, it was like, uh oh. Honestly, I don't even, I don't even think that Brody cared about what happened to him backstage. Like he was like, I'm just not gonna sell. Simple, like. No, but that's what I'm saying. But that's not that's the first one thing. Step. That's one thing I also like about Bruce Brody. He didn't care what other people. But thought that's about what I'm saying. Him. That but Brody that's, did it for Brody, not but, nobody but else. That's what I'm saying. That you still sometimes you still see that. Sometimes you still, and I've seen it several times. Um, for instance, with uh, uh recently re- uh, released Nia Jax, she went into um. She went into a shoot fight. The history with, of uh, uh, the history Brody. of Bruiser Brody and his greatest rivalries, as well as current events in uh, professional wrestling. We're giving news as we go. My back. You see, a, you saw a shoot fight with Nia Jax and Charlotte Flair. That yeah, they, they was they were legitimately the fighting. Like that was um, a real. It's calmed down a little bit. No, but now not. But. It's definitely calmed down because Nia Jax is fired. She's no longer I mean, there. No, no, no. Like during the match, they were having like you know real blows, but like a little bit after yeah. the match, it cal- it calmed in the down, match, it calmed, it calmed down, down. So, but they were that's leg- what they needed to do. They were legitimately fighting. Each other. Um, but when you see something like that, it looks like damn. Like what's gonna happen backstage? What's gonna happen? Backstage? And it's also happened one time in the Worry Rumble with um, Braun Strowman, Kane, and Brock Lesnar. When Braun Strowman need Brock Lesnar to the head, Brock Lesnar got up, punched him in the stomach, and punched him in the face, like yeah. in the head, boom, he and told him, him he slow him the, the hell down. Punched him in the temple. Like I'm like, wow. So that's how Bruiser Brody was. If you wasn't, he wasn't gonna sell. That's just how he was. That's just how. It, that's just how it is, because that's Bruiser Brody. You know what I mean? Now, my question to you, Jaden, if there was one super... Actually, no, if there was five superstars in this era or any era that would have been able to take him on, who would they be? That's kind of hard to say. In your opinion. You know, I only got one in mind at the moment, and... Oh, you got me on that. (laughs) Um, Okay, see, I only say that because, like... Nowadays, like, I don't know. It's really hard. In any era. Okay. In any any era. Before he passed. If he would have still been in the era of the 80s going into the 90s. Okay, so any era. I would honestly, I would honestly have to say Mick Foley. Okay. I would like to see him again. And I say that because Mick Foley can actually take that. Like, if him and Bruiser Brody... He would... Listen, fight, Mick Foley Mick would go Foley into would business. In he would go in to do business and, and sell for, Bro, for Bruiser Brody. I told you Jay, Jay Lethal would sign with <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. 
That's that was a good call, man. That was, that was a, a really call. good call. Now, now it's crazy to see what the new what new Ring of Honor superstars are gonna do. Are they gonna sign with AEW? Are they gonna sign with WWE? New Japan? There's many organizations out there that are looking for some top talent. And Most Ring definitely. of Honor, just because you don't hear about them on TV or certain places, they have a lot of great talent. Right. You know what I mean? And they they got some. I think WWE needs to act up on act on this. You know what I mean? So. It's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see where the next uh, couple of superstars from Ring of Honor go and which position. Right. You know, maybe they might they might go back to Indies. Who knows? You really think so? Hey, you know, you never know. You never know. That would be that would be interesting. Yeah, honestly. exactly. There's more options now for these wrestlers because now there's more organizations. There's more organizations. You know, right, it's MLW, so. like it's CWF. There's a lot of places. That's what I'm saying. So these wrestlers are stuck anymore with just WWE. And honestly speaking, AEW is a little more interesting than WWE right now. So that's like the hot spot. And AEW is just racking up. Like they're going early Christmas shopping because they're just racking up mad wrestlers for their company so mm -hmm. okay so we got a comment from uh jamie solomon's welcome man it's been a hot minute um let me read this comment in just a moment folks give me a second, give me a second. um are you all right yes i'm good <laughs> uh jamie says harley race triple h and ming as opponents that would Bruce be, and Brody. You know, I I could see though. okay me personally i could see i could see that. i can see triple h fighting it fits the cerebral assassin yeah. Not Mr. Corporate. Nah. Not, tri not the Triple H of today. Of course not. The Triple H of when he became the game. The, the game. The, the, the heel. You're talking long Triple hair H. Triple H. Harley Race was just a legitimate badass. <laughs> right. Like, no, literally. Like, he, he was, was a legitimate though. badass. He was, though. That's what and I'm saying. Like, he, he was able to hold his own. Oh, yeah, he could. And, I feel like he could hold his and own. And Ming, Haku. Uh, excuse me. Tonga, <laughs> the man, is fierce. He can like that's the, he's that's tough. The perfect. That's the perfect name for him. He's Fierce. tough. He is the man is tough. tough. And <laughs> you didn't you didn't want to piss him off. You d no at all. That that should be the last thing you you wanted to do. Because, you know what I mean? Because he he was a bulldog. He he, he gave it to you. Was he absolutely was a bulldog? Agreed. You know what I mean? But like you said, when when it comes to stuff like that, when you're not selling, you're not selling. And when you're having when you're having beef with certain people. Sometimes you settle it in the ring. Sometimes you do it backstage. And um, when we when we also talk about beef, um, this is other something we don't want to mention. Becky Lynch uh, apparently uh, there's details of her backstage issues with Charlotte Flair. According to news, uh, wrestling news, Charlotte Flair has been extremely difficult to work backstage and in the ring. You know, Becky. Seems like Charlotte Flair is trying to be one of them untouchable people. No, I don't think that's untouchable. I think she's trying to push her way out to go to AEW with her fiance. You really think? I that? think so. I mean, why does he just pick up and go? Because she like, has a contract, and they're not gonna release her. They're not gonna. Release they're not gonna release her. Oh, if they, okay. if she does something out of the out of the ordinary and does something she's not supposed to, then that's when Becky Lynch. I call that. You, you're probably right. She probably will go to AEW. I wouldn't even put it past you. Yeah, she probably will. Charlotte probably will. And if she AEW. does, that is a big acquirement by I AEW. I would not put it past you. Especially for the women's division. That's, that a, it big, that's a big pickup right there. Excellent. Excellent. That would be a pickup. great pickup right there. You know That'd what I mean? Perfect. Charlotte Flair and AEW is gold. Of course. I agree. Of course. I agree. Of course. Charlotte Flair With her and, and Andrade? AEW. That would be perfect right there. That could be his new his new consultant. And she can still fight. She could be a consultant when she when he fights and you know whenever she her fights, as the her as the AEW uh, uh women's champion, him as AEW world champ? That would be perfect. That would be amazing. That would be a masterpiece right there. But WWE better lock her up. WWE better find something to do because if you let Charlotte Flair go, that's a big loss. Okay, so Jaden, you haven't answered my question yet. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of five. Well, okay, see, now that somebody gave a suggestion, Triple H is actually somebody I could see. Um, believe it or not, I could see The Undertaker fighting yeah. too. Yeah, well, he see, did fight The Undertaker. He did fight The Undertaker. I'm talking like... He fought The Undertaker when Undertaker was first starting in professional. I think it was some gimmick he had I'm and Bruce Brody like whipped his ass. The Feed, The Fiend. The Fiend. Well, I would say The American the Badass. I would rather see The American Badass. Hell yeah, Brian. Okay. She would definitely be... Uh, they would definitely be solid champions, be an and she would have been an epic heel. Agreed. For sure. Definitely be an epic heel. 
Like, she's an epic heel now. Like, people hate her. Yo, you should have seen her promo. She's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Becky Lynch is, is sad because she's a mother. Uh-oh. I'm like... Oh, that's messed up. Yo, she was going in <laughs> oh, that's on messed that up. promo. Like, wow. <laughs> that's messed up. Like, she was definitely going into that promo. I don't think that per- that promo was fake. Like... No. I it's... legit think that Listen, was like a personal... They, they got... They have legitimate... That was like too. a personal promo. Like, like she it, didn't it's... do that, like, for entertainment she legitimately did that because she wanted to get becky lynch upset no like, listen it was <laughs> that wasn't scripted i don't think that was scripted. oh man well guys for for those of you tuning in please feel free to share our content all over social media bring uh many people into this conversation bring your friends cousin everybody everybody and bring them in brew the best of bruiser brody his greatest rivalries in the history of bruiser brody along with current professional wrestling news news like he said <laughs> As we mentioned that um, uh, Brian had mentioned it to me the other day, he liked the Adam Page and Hangman, um, Adam Page Hangman match and Kenny Omega. I mean, it was a good match. Oh yeah, it was a great match. It was definitely a great match, and uh, Adam Page deserved it. He deserved it. Yeah. And now let's see what type of champion he's gonna be with the Dark Order. But now there's a new rivalry, I believe, with him and Brian Danielson. Now that Brian Danielson has turned heel, and you know, I miss those. Those wrestling events, you know, those regular Monday nights or those regular Friday nights where the regular events used to feel like pay-per-views because Mm -hmm. of how good the matches were. Mm -hmm. I used to... I miss things like that. I feel like AE... Honestly, I feel like new version of the old WWE. Like, everything about AEW is just good, while WWE is not doing so good. Well, WWE, listen, WWE has its moments. It has its moments. Like, okay, for an example, they got the Survivor Series coming up. Oh, but we're gonna talk. Good. We're gonna talk about that a little bit uh, about that later on this afternoon. Uh, this afternoon. This afternoon. And they, because there's been a lot of changes tonight. There's been a lot of changes to the Survivor Series match. Agreed. There's some good matches that are many people are looking forward to seeing, and there's been some changes to the Survivor Series men's match of Raw versus SmackDown. So we're going to get into that uh, also today. I'd like to see an invasion before that happens. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, it, it, the Survivor Series is next week. I believe it's next week. That's what I'm saying. Everything's been different now. Like, you haven't really... I wish we could have seen an invasion. You know, I really... Like we said, I really want to see an invasion with AEW and WWE. That um, would really bring WWE's ratings up extremely but that, but See, but that's high. what I'm saying. That that You don't see that now. In the era of Bruiser Brody, you saw stuff like that. You saw Bruiser Brody go to Japan. You saw Bruiser Brody go to Puerto Rico. You saw Bruiser Brody world. go to World Class Championship Wrestling. You've seen around. him go to WWE. You've seen him go to AWA. The man went everywhere because he was known all over professional wrestling. He fought an AEW against Vader. And Vader was a beast back then. He was a beast. Big Vader fan Vader was, was a, a badass. Beast. You know what I mean? And then he fought Antonio Noki in Japan. Mm-hmm. He fought Abdullah the Butcher in WCCW. He fought Carlos Colon in Puerto Rico. That match alone between was, those two, that rivalry that was, was right. crazy. Like... And then his promo, Carlos Colon, Carlos Colon. <laughs> it was in the documentary. You seen it, right? <laughs> you seen it. It was in the documentary. You know what I mean? So oh my god. He he pretty much. <laughs> Carlos Colon. <laughs> That's what he did. But he was able to. <laughs> he was able Ooh, to boy. catch the attention of the fans. The the, the promo like, Kamacha. Come and cross-sided and yelling like <coughs> he really, he really, really did his character. Yeah, Bruce Van Brody was like if anybody owned their character, it was him. It was, him. Bruiser, it was Brody. Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody owned his character for sure. He did that character with a masterpiece. That character was <laughs> art right there. Exactly. Okay. So to finish this off, before we get into our prediction, uh, our prediction here with Survivor Series. Jaden, instead of five, I'm going to give you three. Give me three superstars. You're making it hard for me. Three. Just three. It's only three. Tres. Uno, uno, dos, tres. Well, I already gave you my three. I said Just like in Aladdin. Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Three. All right. Um, Mick Foley. Mm-hmm. 
the Cerebral Assassin. Triple H. Triple H. Okay. And, uh... Wrestling fans, give us your three superstars that you have wanted to see Bruiser Brody take on if he was still alive in the late 80s going into the 90s. And The Undertaker. Okay. Those are excellent choices. Yes. Those Why? Are my, those are my two. Well, uh... Let's see. I feel like with the Cerebral... Well, you want me to give a reason for all three of them? Yeah. All right. Well... For the Cerebral Assassin, I feel like when he was the Cerebral Assassin, he was like, you know, he was ruthless. He was, he when he was the Cerebral Assassin, Triple H got down. And I'm talking about, you know, he did not hold back for anybody whatsoever. Thank you, honey, for the hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Thank you. Um, take her, of course. Take exactly. her, of course. Now, yes. I say the... Now, hold on, hold on. Before you get into that, I'm sorry. When, when you're done, Brian, I want you to tell me which taker, though, which gimmick. Continue. I can't say that version of Taker you're talking about, but I would like to see that one go against uh, Bruiser Brody. John Moxley would not even be a bad. That would John not Moxley, be bad. Wow. That, that would not think be about bad. That. John I Moxley. Either. That would not. I mean, it's a hey, crazy he SOB. Is known, yeah, see that. The American one. badass. Yeah. See, the American I, badass. I can't say that. You but can that say one. that. The American badass. I can't say that. The American baddie. Uh, the American bad booty. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds weird. You gotta say his name right. Well, you know, you know the Undertaker. I know the Undertaker. That's all I gotta say. The Undertaker. But yeah, no, that's that's excellent. John Moxley, one more, Brian, one more, and Mick Foley. Mick Foley would definitely Mick sell Foley for, for, for Bruiser But I feel like he would also put Triple, on a listen, good match. Listen, Triple H too. and him would be a hell of a match. That would be a that match. would be a hell of a match. That would be, especially with the Sledgehammer Man. Me personally, the Chain versus the Sledgehammer. Man. Well, we have we have Wancho that picks Sting, The Rock, and Stone Cold. I wouldn't even mind watching all three of those yeah. either. I could see those three happen. Now the question is, would, it, would he sell for Stone Lesner, Cold? Lesnar, okay, Lesnar, Triple H, H, H and, and Moxley. Moxley. Wow, Lesnar. I feel like two thousand three. I, I would say Lesnar two thousand three. Two thousand three Lesnar, the Cerebral Assassin Triple H and John Moxley. That would John be. Moxley death match. John Moxley. Yes, that would. Oh man, that that would that would fill seats. That would fill seats. That, that match would put would butts seats. in the seats. All like that's of them. that would be that would amazing. That would the crowd. I feel like that. if that was to ever happen, the oh, only reason man, that people would go crazy. to that event was that would have been that. crazy. That would be bloody. Me personally, I would have wanted to see the Undertaker mm -hmm. as the Phenom, right? Mick Foley as Cactus Jack. And my third and final pick would have to be, drum roll please. Stop. Roddy Piper. I had a feeling you were going to pick Roddy Mike Piper. Mike Awesome is a good pick. Former ECW superstar, he was lethal and extreme. And he was, a, he was also a phenom in Japan too. Mike Awesome. But uh, you know what's definitely awesome and going to be awesome? The WWE Survivor Series. That is going to be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Survivor Series is in is probably the second best third pay-per-view that there is in WWE. Tonight, we're going to give you our predictions and we're going to go down to them. And you let us know what is your thoughts about this match. First match that's coming up, the Raw WWE Tag Team Champions, RK Bro, Randy Orton, and Matt Riddle... Going up against the SmackDown Tag Team Champions from the Bloodline, the Usos. Jaden, what do you think? Oh, I got to go with the Bloodline, baby. I got to go with the Usos. Okay, why is that? Well, you know, like you said, um, <laughs> I see what you did there, young whippersnapper. <laughs> Um, you know, she I says think, Cactus Jack versus Funk versus Brody. Oh my God! Triple hell, threat, hell a, holy shit! The, everybody's leaving in the stretcher. That the, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely! Nobody's walking. Nobody's walking out of that match. Out of that match. <laughs> everybody's just, leaving in a stretcher. That's a stretcher match. <laughs> oh my God! Stretcher. That is definitely a stretcher everybody's match. Everybody's leaving in a stretcher. There's nobody walking out. Absolutely. On their feet. Everybody's Absol walking <laughs> off on a stretcher. What do you guys think? Uh, the Usos or uh, RK Bro? You know, R I'm not even. I can't even knock RK bro. Because Listen, with believe these it or not, they are a good Orton, tag team. They're a good tag team, but I the bloodline go the is blood on line. fire right now. The Usos are on fire. I see, see, definitely the bloodline. I gotta give it to the bloodline. Yeah, definitely a bloodbath. Exactly. See, that's a stretcher match. Oh no, absolutely. No one's living. Absolutely. No one's, that no would be a bloodbath out. between those three. No one's walking. Captain out Jack is a lunatic. Usos, right? Yeah. He's a lunatic. I that's wouldn't even. Be surprised to see Roman Reigns interfere in that match. Honestly speaking. Oh, listen. With, the, with that tag, that's going to be an excellent tag team match. 
because the Usos are going to fight somebody that has experience. Randy Orton is a veteran. A over oh, yeah. 20 year veteran I, that Randy he knows Orton what he's doing in the veteran. ring. And if you and if Randy Orton know, uh, believes that you know what you're doing, he's going to protect you. He's going to fight you in the ring. And that's what they do. So That's most definitely. So who your who's your Oh yeah, you said your pick, right? The Usos? I said the Usos. The Usos. Okay, okay. Hold hold on. Well, I'm sorry. We're still doing our predictions here. The bloodline for a bloodbath. I saw what you did there. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> the bloodline for a bloodbath. Sorry. No, no, no. That's good. You know what you just did there. The bloodline and then bloodbath. You see that? You, you see the word because you know blood. The, the plethora. The, yeah, the, plethora. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you get it. You uh, understand. Oh, okay, son. Thank you. I appreciate you it. I appreciate you it. You get it. Excuse me. What? <laughs> Let's continue. Um, right. The bloodline right now is hot. Oh, yeah. The bloodline is hot, and it's it's like, what are you going to do? They're, They're the best woo. thing going on right now in wrestling. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, what are you going to do next? <laughs> the he said the young guy gets it. <laughs> See? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so, we got that out the way. Now this match is interesting to me. I didn't I didn't never think this match would happen, but I think it's gonna be a hell of a match, especially with the attitude lately of Damian Priest. WWE United States champion Damian Priest against Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. I gotta go with Damian Priest on that. That's one. tough, man. I gotta go with That's a I'm tough not saying, I'm not saying, you know, this is gonna have me on the edge of my seat because this is gonna be a I feel like this is gonna be a great match. No, it's but, definitely gonna be like a great you said. Match. With Damian Priest's attitude lately, I feel like he listen, ain't playing no he, games. Listen, he's he, yeah. He, yeah, I'm he, a fan of the yeah Damian because Priest. Because of his Priest new, is his one new of attitude. My, Damian Priest you know is I mean? he's on my a, list of favorite wrestlers. No, listen, yeah. he he's from the Bronx. He's a Puerto Rican. Damian Priest, you know, is, is that that, that's a big achievement when you're you're coming out of the Bronx and. Becoming a professional wrestler. Please don't drop the ball with this guy. Please. See, see we, uh, he even said it. Boricua all the way. Damian Priest. Exactly. Please do not drop the ball with Damian Priest. He is such a good wrestler with such good talent right now. They do. They better not drop the ball with this guy or we're going to have some big, big problems. Brian says that he thinks that mid-card title should be winner take all. Honestly, I wish it would too. That, I wish me it was personally, too. me personally, listen. They they should do a unification title and just put the way they used to have it, three championships. Oh, they had the Intercontinental, the World Title, and the Tag Team Title. That's it. Now and the women's title. Titles, now right? they have all these titles in the United the States and Universal. They have You're like little, two Universals. They have one they have, title for one brand. They have one for SmackDown <coughs> and Raw. No. And they have two titles for SmackDown That's and Raw. That's probably what they need. That's probably what they need to do. That'll make it more competitive, too. Of course. Of course. That'll Fans will tune in all the time. Competitive. Fans will tune in all the time. And you don't even have to have your world champion on the show all the time. You can flip it around a flip little bit. Flip it. That's what I'm saying. Or even if you want your world I'm, champion on the show, you listen, don't always need I'm a huge fan fight. of Damian Priest. Damian Priest is But I'm guy. also a huge fan of Shinsuke Nakamura. Shins hey, Shinsuke been wrecking so, house, too. I'm going to have so. to say, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm neutral on this one. I'm not, I can't vote. I got to go with Damian Priest. I can't then. vote. I got to... Gotta, you know, I gotta see, go with that guy. Watch, he listened to this comment of what Alex Tirado said. Uh, welcome, brother. He said, uh, it is sad that you are worried if WWE would drop the ball, but it's true. It's true. It is really sad. That's what I'm saying. It's sad as a fan. I gotta think like that, but most of the time, that's what happens to these wrestlers. They get dropped, and then their character goes down the drain. That's what I'm saying. That's Damian what, Priest is really good talent. That's, that's so what, I hope no, but they that's don't what I'm saying. That. That's what happened to Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, what was it? Just Shinsuke? It was a whole bunch of other wrestlers. Chicken too. can't vote. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's 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 like, come on, man! You dropped the ball with certain superstars, and, and, and like I said, I'm still not over the fact they released Keith Lee. I can't. For what? Why? Why? They should have put him. You in repackage the him for business. nothing. They should have put him in there. They should have. Put him in the hurt business. Like I, I don't. Like, that would have been perfect for him. Should have put him in the hurt business. That would have been the best. <laughs> but I'm staying neutral with that one. Okay. Um. The next match we got our women's uh, Survivor Series match, which uh, some, um, they have. Uh, there's still some some uh, females to be announced. But as of right now, for Team uh, Raw, we have Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, and uh, Ke Queen Vega, Selena Vega. And then on Team SmackDown, you have Sasha Banks, Shotzi, Shayna Baszler, Natalya, and one person to be announced. 
Um, I gotta go with Raw on this one. Um, honestly, though, I might have to go with Raw on this one. Um... WWE been dropping the ball since Vince killed, killed the, the Attitude, attitude Era. Honestly, I, I agree. Not even I absolutely you're agree not, with you're that. You're not even you're wrong. Not wrong. I agree with you're that. You're not even wrong. He's because literally after, been doing listen, that. Listen, I say to me, wrestling stopped being wrestling after 2009. I feel, yeah, after the Ruthless Aggression Era. Is when after that, that was it. That, that was it After for me. that, yeah. After that wrestling. You know, you started, you started doing, you started putting Randy Orton as he was mentally ill then uh, uh, you yeah, had that was uh, weird. That you was... had Nexus that you, you yeah they came but then you just dropped it and that's what I'm mad about. I'm mad. I feel like ne- Nexus would be perfect right now. I feel like honestly the Nexus could save WWE if they were to come back. Yeah, because like but the next that, that I'm gonna go with Raw. I'm gonna so go with women's Raw tag too. team match. Yeah, I'm going with the women's tag team too. Agreed. So there's also been some changes to the Tony Storm stepping in on SmackDown. Interesting. If that is confirmed, um, we're actually gonna re- we see if we can find some news for that on WWE Survivor Series to see. Um, to see what is going on with the Survivor Series team, and they, and uh, WWE Champion apparently uh, Biggie is opening is open to making a heel turn and jumping to Hollywood acting. So he wants to act. Interesting. That is. And also, uh, Jeff Hardy's pitching an idea to turn heel without the fans without the fans turning on him. How is that even gonna work? How would he do that? I don't know. That's Honestly, interesting to I see. Could, I could see Jeff Hardy doing something like that. Jeff Hardy is one mischief guy, so I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Hardy actually pulls that off. I would not. I so would not it, put so it, it is confirmed that Tony Storm has taken the final spot on the uh, SmackDown Women's uh, team. Okay. So okay. that uh, it's not confirmed yet, but we will, uh, according to the source probably, of the fans, it's, it's probably, probably is. Gonna be, it's probably gonna be confirmed. Um, the Raw Men's Tag Team will feature Seth Rollins. Finn Balor, oh, Kevin Owens, now acquired into the mix after currently uh, uh, Rey Mysterio has been taken off the team. Austin Theory and Bobby Lashley, who also took out Dominic Mysterio. They will be facing Drew McIntyre, Xavier Woods, Jeff Ooh. Hardy, Happy Corbin, and a uh, team member to be announced. I don't I don't know. That one is hard. Uh, I don't know, Dad. Who you got? I'm going to go with Raw on this one. But it's it's difficult it's tough, because though. they might turn on each other with it's the egos in that team. It's uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have Willow to will make Hardy's it. heel turn. Yep, it sure will. Willow will make it Hardy's sure heel will because he was Willow. He used to go by Willow, you know. But that definitely would be interesting to uh, see. I'm gonna go with Raw too. Yeah, Raw Raw is the one I'm picking right now. I feel like Raw would be the one that. Is gonna take it, but like you said, they could turn on each other. So well, that's I really what don't know with what so, to expect. With so many egos, it's it's gonna be tough. it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to do. I mean, I wouldn't know. be surprised. If come on, you got Smackdown you got Finn Balor, like Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens and Bobby Lashley are not gonna be able to get along. Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins are not gonna be able to get along. I don't think any of them are gonna be. Finn able to Balor and Seth Rollins ain't gonna be. Able to, Seth Rollins is, don't get in, 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 he doesn't with get anybody. along with anybody, right? Let alone any. He doesn't get along with anybody. So, so but hey, we see what happens. Now, this match, I say, is definitely, definitely personal. Hmm. Charlotte Flair, the SmackDown Women's Champion, going up against Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually start fighting in that match. I'm gonna give, I wouldn't put it uh, Listen, to I'm going to give that match to Becky Lynch. And I, I say that I because it. when it comes to going into business, Becky Lynch will go into business. Charlotte Flair, she's an excellent superstar. She, uh, granted, she she can do what she can do. But she's not untouchable. But she's not untouchable. She's stiff. She sometimes wrestles <laughs> stiff, and some people that pisses people off. Right. You can't wrestle stiff in the ring. You can't because it will piss somebody it will off. We legitimately get somebody angry. You like, know what I mean? And I'm gonna go with Becky Lynch. I'm on going this with one. Becky Lynch. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if an actual fight. A WD, w, uh, double DQ lazy booking. It's possible. It's possible. That Charlotte Flair might not even want to take the loss. She might not even want to take the loss and probably describe herself. Honestly, I wouldn't even put that past you. I, I could see one of that. That could be one of the outcomes, mm-hmm. honestly speaking. Now, what is going to be the outcome of this main event between Roman Reigns, the Universal Champion, against Big E, the WWE Champion? Oh. Both at the top of their game right now. The bloodline, Roman Reigns, is going into this match in the main event. The man has not been beaten. You know, I'm going to say Roman Reigns 
And I say that because we could possibly see a heel turn from oh. Big e. <laughs> I was waiting Roman, for my wife I'm telling you, to say Roman. <laughs> Roman. And I say Roman too, but I still say the fact that we could possibly see a now, heel turn between no, no, Big e. I no, feel like that's It's happen. possible, but I feel like this is a perf- this is actually a interesting comment. Hmm. Shane says a no contest, a surprise return interface. Who could it? Could be? we see The Rock? I still feel like it's gonna be. But a they're heel saying turn. that The Rock is not. Uh, Big E needs to win. It's a smart thing to do. Well, it, <laughs> I still feel like they should give it to Roman and make Big E heal during Survivor Series. Listen, if if Big E wins this match, it would bring him so much momentum with the fans. Like, I mean, it depends on what they're planning on doing with him during Survivor Series. But, that, but here's my question: though, who's, who or? is going to be Roman Reigns' new opponent after this? Like, what's That's next why for the he Blood said guy? he said there could be a surprise entrance coming along and i would not even be surprised to see that i wouldn't put it past you if there is a surprise entry coming to i don't know we, we don't it. he's done pretty Big much e done. wins with heel turn that wouldn't even that be wouldn't bad. i wouldn't be mad wouldn't at that be mad i would at not that. be mad at that i wouldn't either you know I what would, i mean I listen big e, I, I would want to see biggie as a heel i would yeah. yeah he jokes around he does whatever but i see biggie but, as a heel biggie would be a good uh, of heel. course he would be an amazing i mean heel. he was a heel when he was the guy the side but guy i see the bloodline thing. interfering making um, interfering in this match and yes shane that's right 25 years of the rock so he will make he, he will possibly make an appearance and if he makes an appearance that is the stepping stone of the match either at Royal Rumble or at WrestleMania between those two. You, the crowd is going to go crazy. If they and that would it, that would be teacher versus student. Mm. Roman Reigns versus The Rock. Cousin and I'm cousin dying too. to see that match. Me too. I really want to see that match. Most no, but see, see, Alex, he's beating everyone because they're making him untouchable. I'm telling you. Because the bloodline like the is Rock. the best thing going on in professional wrestling I right also, now. Then I feel like The Rock is probably going to put an end to that Possibly. Reign, honestly Possibly. Honestly speaking. The it's Rock possible. is going to be the one to put an end if to not, that If not, he might just pass the torch over to Roman Reigns. You never know. But agreed. With professional wrestling, it's un it's un- unpredictable. You know, it's never you don't know what's gonna happen with professional wrestling. No, it's definitely definitely un unpredictable. WWE has been doing some crazy stuff that uh, I can't e- I can't even think of what what's next. You know what I mean? Right. Or what they're gonna do? What they're gonna do next? You know what I mean? But. Oh man, it's just WWE needs to get it together. They fast, cause um things are not looking good for WWE. Well, right let's now. see, Alex. Let's see if he does need to lose. You know what I mean? It's it's something that's good that ha- is gonna bound to happen. He's gonna lose, and eventually he's gonna do that. He's gonna do a face turn. He's gonna do a face turn. He's gonna do what he needs to do, and let's see what happens. Maybe he will become a heel turn, uh, uh, a face. And went over the fans now that he's such an amazing heel. Um, but fans, this just thing that I just read uh, today. WWE apparently is going to put WWE NXT 2.0 become a TV 14 show. Wait a minute. Do we got a comment from the producer? I don't like this guy losing. <laughs> Alex, you gotta be careful, man. My wife is a big Roman Reigns fan. She's the director, producer. Please don't get me in hot water. <laughs> but you're a fan. You can bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Oh man. Uh, Shane says the Rock versus Roman. Ro- Rollins cashes in his title shot and wins like he did at Mania. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. <laughs> right. You say, oh, God, that's why he needs to lose. <laughs> oh, man. But that's what that's what happened. So, yeah, as I was mentioning, uh, they, that apparently it NXT... It will extend his career. That's actually true. Of course. It, it most definitely, definitely extend will career. extend his career. Because it would make him more, more fierce, you know? And like you said, you know, he could possibly win the crowd over, too, if he becomes a babyface. Yeah. Since he's a good heel right now. Well, like but, I mentioned, Jada, with NXT, they are trying to become TV-14. Is w- Meaning edgy. Is WWE TV 14 or no? no? Well, they need but to it, make WWE TV 14. Of course they do. Of course they do. Wasn't TV, wasn't WWE TV 14? No, WWE was TV. <laughs> Sorry to your wife for raising for the loss. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's basically, it'll basically be a good loss though. Because but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens now, when it comes to that match. WWE, it's going to be interesting to see if it, it does happen. 
was WWE before in the Attitude Era? Was WWE in TV fourteen or TV MA? They were they were mature. They were mature. TV MA, okay. WWE is Disney right now. They that you don't know what's gonna happen with WWE. (sighs) They need to make uh, WWE TV mature again because. That's when WWE was actually good. Well, that's what happens, man. But wrestling fans, our time is up here. Thank you for joining us for this amazing topic of Bruiser Brody's greatest rivalries in the history of Bruiser Brody, along with all great wrestling news around the world. Uh, Please feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Please feel free to go on TikTok as well and follow us on our videos. And uh, yes, Vince definitely needs to retire. I agree with that 150%. Um, also, we want to wish everyone here from the Evolution of Pro Wrestling family a very, very happy and safe Thanksgiving. We uh, we want we would like to give thanks. Uh, thank you, wrestling fans, for being there for us, for being here with for the past two years and joining us for these topics. Yeah, just give me turkey. <laughs> I'm just playing. And we appreciate it. And we hope you have a safe one. Right. Um, we will be back on December second. We will be gone two weeks. December 2nd is when we return, and that topic for the day will be the top 10 real-life rivalries in professional wrestling. We mean real beef. Like le- outside, legitimate of, outside, outside of the, of the ring. ring. And we, you, give, you fans, give us, the, give us your thoughts on professional wrestling's legitimate beef. Just like, uh, thank you, Shane. We appreciate it. Thank you, honey. We appreciate it. Just like Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Why is that getting personal? We're going to talk about that in the following week, along with current wrestling events all over the world. For myself, Lewis, the Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling. AJ, the whiz kid of Pro Wrestling. And for my lovely producer and my wife, Yesenia. Thank you for joining us, fans. We'll see you in two weeks. Happy Thanksgiving!